prevail. As I read through some of this, Jefferson, I'm going to paraphrase his words, but this is what Jefferson says. There is a point in time where if you come against the United States of America, we will stand up. Amen. So think carefully before your hopes engage you in defeat. When I was a young lad, I decided I wanted to play pop water football. Some of my friends were playing. It was on the 75 pound pop water team. I think I was in the sixth grade. So I showed up. They handed me equipment and said, we'll see you tomorrow. So I went. Now they said, how many of you are here to be running backs? I didn't know what that was. Okay. So I just stood still. How many of you? I said, brother Bob? Okay, I'll do that. And they said, no. <laughs> uh, you're built more like a lineman than a running back. Okay. Can you hike the ball? Well, how complicated can that be? I mean, come on, right? I'm, sure. So I became the center, number 50. They also said, can you play defense? I said, I don't know. But, you know. You're kind of built like a linebacker. We're going to make you a linebacker. For those of you that don't know, you have the front line, you have the linebackers, and you have the quarters and safeties. They decided I was going to be a linebacker, inside linebacker. I was like, okay. I'm cool. <laughs> Every bit of five feet tall and 75 pounds. <laughs> I'm still five feet tall, but I gained a little weight. <laughs> Which is really interesting because I lost 75 pounds. So, amen. Hey, I'm, I'm back. I'm going play on the 75 pound team. No, I'm good. Anyway, the coach said, Do you know anything about playing linebacker? I said, No, sir. He said, This is what I want you to do. There's your front line. I want you to stand right here. And nobody running the football comes into your world. And anybody that doesn't have the football and comes into your world, I want you to take your hands and throw them to the ground. And then hit the guy that's carrying the football. Okay. <laughs> I can do that. So the first play, we're scripted the first play. He didn't tell me that the guy playing tight end could not be on my rear end. He didn't tell me that. And he did. And he said, I thought I told you to stand right here and throw anybody off that comes at you and tackle the guy with the ball. Yes, sir. The tight end knocked me down again. This time, Coach Gibson held me to my feet by my face mask. <laughs> Do you not understand what stand means? And I said, apparently not. He said, get rid of that guy. I don't care how you do it, just get rid of him. Okay. Tackle the guy with a ball. Tight end came at me again. I grabbed him. I threw him all the way to Marietta. <laughs> the guy with the ball ran this way. And I watched him run. <laughs> Shut the guard. I met that boy right here. 
And I hit him so hard that his grandkids <laughs> haven't come conscious yet. <laughs> <laughs> he fumbled the ball. I recovered the fumble. And I thought, that was fun. <laughs> he walked up to me and said, what are you smiling about? I said, I did what you told me to do. He goes, you're supposed to do what I tell you to do. <laughs> Wipe that smile off your face and do your job. Stand right there. <clears throat> A lesson I learned. My dad said to me one time when I was playing little league baseball to plant myself in the batter's box. Get comfortable and don't move your feet. Step, step. He never told me that some pitchers can't throw well. <laughs> I stood, got hit in the head. He said, Barry, it's okay to duck. <laughs> The body of Christ has done too much duck. Yeah. The citizens of the United States have done too much duck. Yes. We are moving out of the way and we're not doing what God is calling us to do. And nobody fears us anymore. The series I'm going to begin today is entitled Stand. And I'm going to touch on some things that may not be politically correct in the next couple of weeks. But I've never been politically correct. And I'm not going to start now. It's time that somebody stood up and said, God is on the throne. to me than being politically correct. Amen. It has been bought with a price. My salvation has been bought with a price. I got a shirt at home. I haven't worn it, but I, I mean I haven't worn it here. I got a shirt at home that says, you can't separate my faith and my politics. They are one and the same. I move on some things. I'm flexible on some things. But until the body of Christ takes back America, we will suffer what we are suffering today. We will fail to meet the responsibilities that God has given us. Brothers and sisters, there are thousands of Christians being slaughtered every week. And we're comfortable with that. Let's be honest. Let's stand up. Let's start to realize things. Children. Children in Syria are being massacred in the streets. Their parents, their fathers are being crucified. They're dying in Libya. They're dying all over the world. And the only problem we ain't got involved is because it doesn't involve us. Wake up! They're here! They're not going to show up. They showed up. Please turn your Bibles to Matthew, the tenth chapter. Jesus is sending out the twelve. And he's going to have a discourse with them about what to expect, what's coming. And I want to say, we take the message from the twelve and we apply it to the body of Christ right now. For you and I are followers of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? We're not waiting around to be a follower. We are a follower. And there's a whole segment of the body of Christ that's waiting for the rapture. They don't want to get engaged. They don't want to be involved. They don't want to stand up for this country. You realize what happens if we lose America? It's the last place to fall until the end. Verse 16. Chapter 
chapter 10, verse 16. I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and be flogged in the synagogues. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say, for it will, be, it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. Here it is. Listen to this. You will be hated by everyone because of me. But the one who stands firm to the end <coughs> will be saved. Amen? Amen. I'm sending you out as wolves to the sheep. How did we get here? How, what's some of the factors that brought us to this place? And this nation is in such a mess that you can't turn in any direction that something didn't come at you. The question is going to remain, are we going to do like the church has done in history? Or are we just going to sit on our pews and do nothing? Assuming that it will eventually be okay. That's what they thought in Germany in 1928. How'd that work out for us? <clears throat> we are sheep to wolves. But notice what Jesus says here. It's very, very clever. He says, be as shrewd as snakes. Now that doesn't mean dishonest. That means, I like what the King James says, I think it says it better, it's a better translation. It says be as wise as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. Wisdom comes from God. James says all you have to do is ask the Lord. So any of you that don't have wisdom, shame on you. Because you're just sitting there motoring. It's time for you to put it in gear. Wisdom comes from God, but you've got to be listening. You cannot ask God to give you wisdom, and then you stand around going, mm -hmm. <laughs> You have not because you ask God. It's that simple. Lord, give me wisdom, and in that wisdom, in the knowledge that we have, no one in here is stupid. No one, we may be ignorant. <laughs> Amen? Come on. We may be ignorant. Because only one person could tell me that the first president that went to war with Muslims, oh, Mo could. She's a history teacher. She knows her history. <laughs> Amen? I saw her elbow mark when I said that. <laughs> That doesn't mean we're stupid. That just means we didn't know. I didn't know that until I read the book. And I went, wow. Most people think it was George W. Bush. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Amen. Most people say, well, it's Bush. <laughs> the United States has fought Muslims on countless occasions. And how, where's that gotten us? I'm sorry? Where's that gotten us? Fighting solves nothing. It just makes more war. Think about it. Break into my house in the middle of the night, yeah. and I promise you we're going to have a war. Amen. And where's that going to get you, Barry? It'll keep me alive and my family alive. Amen. And at some, point, at some point in time, we're no. evil. I'm not advocating that's war. Not true. I'm advocating people standing up. Yeah. I'm not advocating war. But if war is necessary to overcome the destruction of any human being, I'm going to go there. Because if they're trying to kill us, I don't know what else to do. I'm going to pray for them. I'd love. But here's where I'm taking my stand. Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. That's it. Period. Period. So anybody that is anti-Jesus Christ is wrong. Just to shed a little light 
on the peninsula. What's it going to go there? But I'm going to go here real quick. The Islamic religion believes that Jesus is going to come back. But they believe he's a prophet, not the Son of God. They believe he's going to come back and align himself with the Mujahideen. The Mujahideen is the one that's coming back for the Battle of Armageddon. They believe that he and Jesus are going to kill all the Jews and Christians. I did not know that. I did not know that. Not only did I read it in a book, but I read it from the Quran. <coughs> Evil happens when good men fail to do nothing. No, I'm not for war. I've never been for war. I hate war, but I don't know anybody that's been engaged in a war that doesn't hate it. Nobody wants to do that. But I am certainly opposed to children being massacred in the street. I certainly am opposed to people beheading people, not because, not because they're bad people, but beheading people because they believe differently than somebody else. Jesus said, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, and unto God that which is God's. Now, I could spend all day talking about all the bad things America has done. Absolutely. Come on. Let's not be naive. We've got a whole list of things that we were. We've actually put some of the radical Muslims in power because we backed dictators. Come on. Come on. Let's be honest. But I don't want to be in a nation that will stand up for people who have been killed in the streets. Because if you don't, it's coming to a neighborhood near you. Jesus said, you've got to be wise, but harmless. Where are we going to start? I'm going to tell you where we're going to start. We're going to start standing. And then we're going to start naming. We're going to start engaging in the most powerful nuclear device known to mankind, and that is prayer. Amen. 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 There you go. And I'm talking about serious. I'm talking about suck the rug prayer. I'm not talking about God is great, God is good. I'm talking about there, there. Visitor this morning, Miss Pam, come up this morning to the cross. She was in prayer. You know what she said, man? She got through tears. You know what she said, bless your heart. She said, I needed to do that. Man, there's times when all of us need to spend time right there, right there, right there. Jesus said, be cautious. Oops, I'm in Malachi. <laughs> He said, you're going to be taken. You're going to be flogged. You're going to be beaten. I mean, Jesus is telling us about the things that are happening right now. He's telling us then. Christians are being flogged. Christians are being killed. Christians are being, I mean, all over the world. And people will say, well, you know, that was then. This is now. How many of you, just a show of hands, how many of you thought you would see the day that a police officer would be assassinated simply because he was in a uniform. How many of you thought that day would ever happen in America? Anybody? My son-in-law is a police officer. Darrell Blanton, who I've seen from a, as a young man, 15 years old, comes to this church, married to Brand. He's a sheriff's deputy. So he has to face every day walking out the door in that uniform thinking that somebody hates that uniform so much that they're about to walk up to him and shoot him in the head. What has happened to our nation? Amen. It's 
gone to hell. <laughs> Amen. So are we going to do something about it? You bet. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Next Sunday, we're going to start. Next Sunday, this is what I want you to do. You've been faithful in doing this. When I ask you to wear a hat, y'all wore hats. Amen? When I ask you to wear red, you wore red. Amen? Amen. Next Sunday, we're going to bless the police officers in this community. We're going to send up prayers for police officers all over. Next Sunday, I want you to wear blue. I want you to wear blue next week. To honor them. And I want you to get on your knees and start praying for them. For there is evil coming against Facebook. A couple of days ago, when I had the internet, there was a police officer who was holding up a sign that said, My life matters. Jesus said, Whosoever will. Whosoever will. Whosoever will may come to me. He didn't say black, white, red, yellow, pink, pokey dots. He didn't say. You see, because it's not based on us. Jesus' salvation to us is not based on the color of our skin. It's based on the red of his blood. Somebody's got to be able to shout that. Somebody's got to be able to declare that. Somebody's got to be able to stand up and say that. He says, and don't worry about it. How many of you have had this experience? He said, don't worry about what to say when you go before. Man, some of us are going to go before governors and kings. Some of you are just going to go before your relatives. <laughs> That's scary enough, isn't it? But how many times have you thought this or experienced this? That when you got to that moment to say something, you worried about it, you wouldn't have the right words to say. See, we've all, that's happened to all of us. Many of you know I was chaplain in Winter Park Police Department for about 10 years. And I handled all the death notices in the city. And I'd get that call at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Call from the dispatch, say, pick up your radio. <coughs> so I pick up my radio and I'd ask. I'd say, on my way. As I drove to Florida South Hospital or Orlando Hospital or, or the Winter Park Hospital, as I drove there, this was my constant prayer, God, give me the words. Because I knew I was about to change somebody's life, a parent, a spouse, a brother, a sister, a mom or a dad, someone had died, and I'm fixing to change their world. <coughs> Lord, give me the words. Give me the words. I don't have them. I'm not good enough. And you know he never failed me. Amen. Sometimes there were no words. Sometimes all I can do is hug <coughs> and tell them I'm sorry. That's all you can do sometimes. So don't worry about what you're supposed to say. Don't say, well, I, I, I don't have the right words. I don't know if I can tell that person about Jesus Christ. Just step up and start to talk. The Holy Spirit will engage the rest. Isn't that cool? I mean, my Father's going to give you the words. He does. Amen. 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 He won't fail, he does, he won't. Never. <laughs> Amen. Then he says it's personal. He says, brothers will betray brothers to death and fathers, children. Children will rebel against their parents. Really? I didn't know that happened. Uh, <laughs> but he says it had them put to death. If you're waiting for that time, it's arrived. People are converting rather than die and then say, my parents are Christians. And then they go to the parents' house and they say, convert or die. And many parents, many Christians, choose death over denying Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, won't that wake up the church here? Amen. We'll find out the real faith versus the non-faith in a hurry. Why do I love this country so much? Because right now, no one's going to show up and drag us outside and execute us. They can't say the same thing in Syria, can they? Can't say the same thing in Iraq, can they? Can't say the same thing in Libya and on and on and on I could go.
You will be hated by everyone because of me. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. I don't know if you get this. I mean, I, I don't know if you hear this, or you sense this, or you read it, or the secular world hates you. And it hates me. Because it hates Jesus. Look at our school systems. Can't pray, can't worship, can't, can't say a prayer at a football game anymore in many communities. Had to take under God out of some of the pledges of allegiance across the United States. The schools have taken them out. Because they think that's establishing religion by the government. Because they can't read. Or they choose not to read. Or the philosophy dictates something else. It says the government will not form any religion. It doesn't say the government will, will stand against any religion. We're just not going to have a state religion. And I say amen to that. I'm not for a state religion. I'm not even for the state deciding how I pray. I just want the freedom to exercise my yeah. belief. That's all. Yeah. I just don't want you telling me what I can or can't do. I can celebrate Halloween. But I can't celebrate Christmas. Kids can't celebrate Christmas in school. Can't celebrate Easter. Can't celebrate Hanukkah. But you can celebrate Halloween. Just look up All Hallows Eve and see what that is talking about. Just read what the witches believe about October 31st. You just read what the... Do you realize that the first church of Satan in San Francisco, California... October 31st is their high holy day. But it's harmless. In my high school, in 1973, I did a class called Sociology. It's a great class. In that class, we had a witch come lecture us. We did. We had lesbians. We had a gay guy. They all lecturers. When I suggested that we have a member of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, you know what I was told? Can't bring religion into the school. said it's him that stands to the very end. The church is too busy fighting among itself over communion. Thank you. 
you that these orange chairs would offend everybody. Yeah. Amen? So if we offend everybody, we ain't got to worry about anything else. Just let it be offended. If you are more concerned about the color of this chair than you are about your relationship with Jesus Christ, you are in the wrong place. Amen. Man, we're lucky we got chairs. Amen? Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Right. We're lucky we got chairs. Somebody walked up to me and said, I hate this color. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what, what, exactly what color do you call that? <laughs> they said, <laughs> they said, well, to me, it looks like University of Texas orange. And I went, you're absolutely right. It is. We got to get rid of them because I'm an SEC guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then I replied this way. Thank God they're not Florida Gator Orange. Amen. 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 Right? 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 Anybody here really care about those chairs? Anybody care here about standing up? Yes. Yeah. Standing up. Standing up. We're standing up. We're going to get up. We're going to get all our brain and stand up. But we've been sitting on our brain way too long. Way too long. It's numb. It starts today. Right now. Jesus warned them, and what happened to them? Let me just tell you what happened to them. Every one of the apostles, except one, was martyred. Every one of them. John did not suffer at the martyr's hand until he finished the book of Revelation. Story is that he was led out and may have been executed in Ephesus, but there are also other stories that said John lived to a ripe old age and died of natural causes in Ephesus. But the rest of them were executed. The founding fathers that started this nation, not all of them, but most of them lost their homes, their bank accounts. They lost everything to start this nation. Many, many, many. You say, well, they regained it. Okay. But they lost it based on one principle. Give me liberty or give me death. They chose to engage in an enterprise that was so overwhelming that if God wasn't in it, it wasn't going to happen. Amen. I believe God's hand is still on America. Amen. But I'm not so sure if he ain't loosened his grip. time for us to call down the thunder. Yeah. It's time for us to begin in earnest. And this is where I want you to start. I said we're going to believe. But, but this week alone, would you do something for me just this week? The one thing that I want you to pray for every single day is a hedge of protection around police officers. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing I'm going to ask that you pray for. Just a hedge of protection around. This is officer This is officer officer safety. Oh, is it really? No, I didn't know that. I'm glad when they line things up. The only thing they do so far that we've learned is you can get into Sea World or Bush Gardens. Well, hallelujah. Well, then we're going to send something bigger than that. This is more than a t shirt, this is a cause. A handful of people. A handful of people believing that Jesus Christ was the raised Savior changed the world. A handful of people saw the endeavor that would be necessary to be again this great country. A handful of people. So what can we do? We're just a handful of people. And I know every day things look worse and worse and worse 
And now we have to put up, God help us, we have to put up with political ads for another year and a half. I've already selected my candidate. And the only thing that can change my mind right now is God. Now, if you ask me who it is, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not ready to do that yet. Well, I can say I got it down to two. And I'm hoping they'll become the party, <laughs> President Vice President. But I will say this, and then we're going to close. I will not vote for anyone. I will not vote for anyone. who cannot acknowledge Almighty God. Amen. Won't do it. Won't vote for anyone that doesn't, doesn't espouse that this nation was founded on Judeo-Christian principles. Won't do it. Because I'm tired. I'm tired of America being the backside of the world. It's time for us to be the backbone of the world. Amen. It's time for us to be the And that's only going to happen if you stand up. That's only going to happen if you say, Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm going to pray this through. I'm going to pray this through. Then nothing going to happen. God will raise up the men and women who will stand. 30 million Christians didn't vote the last election. 30 million. That ain't happening this time. That ain't happening this time. I'm coming to your house. I'm going to give you a ride. We're going to get a bus. I'm going to buy you lunch. Well, that's what, that's what everybody else does, right? Jesus said, if you stand to the end. Well, for some of us, the end may be today, the end may be tomorrow, but this, this, I want everybody to know. Rich Mullins was, I, I talked about him Wednesday night, Rich Mullins was one of the greatest artists and musical writers of all time, Christian writers. Wrote some of the greatest songs. Um, he went home to be with the Lord. He was killed in a car wreck. But he wrote the song, and here's some of the words in it. He said, and I, this touched me, man. I, I, remember, wow, I remember when I first heard that, how it had an effect on me. And it still does this day. I was listening to this morning. Volume full blast. I was singing. People were looking at me like. <laughs> he says, in the song, there's a line that says, when I go out, I want to go out like Elijah. With my whirlwind and chariot on fire. And I thought, amen. Amen. When I go out, I want to go out like Elijah. <clears throat> With a whirlwind in my chariot on fire. That's the way I want to go out. I don't want to go out sitting down. I want to go out standing up. I want people to know that's what I believe. That's what I cared about. That I love Jesus so much that I was willing to stand. Now, when I stand, that ain't up very much. I told you, I shared with you before, when I went to the doctor, before I went to the doctor, I was five, two and a half. When I came back, I was only five, one. The doctor said, you shrunk. And I said, yeah, you're up. Uh, <laughs> I may only be five, one now, but I'm standing. <coughs> Got the cowboy boots on, I'm standing. And what I'm asking is you to stand with me. I'm asking you to stand with me. If you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, today is the day. Today you need to make a decision. You need to say, I'm standing with Jesus. I'm, I may not do anything else right in my life, but I'm standing with Jesus. I'm standing with him. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stand with him. And if you are in Christ, let this be your mission this week. Not only am I standing up, but I'm speaking up. I'm standing up to share with people, to give them hope, to say, wait a minute, it ain't all bad. God's doing a work. God's just...
has shaken us. He's sifted out. He's just sifted out the bad. And he's going to raise up a crop of believers who will not be shaken. He said the word, once more I will shake the heavens and the earth. He is. He's shaking them right now. And we will stand. I'll be right here if you need prayer. Let's go ahead. Thank <laughs> you.